What's up, love artists? Welcome back to the Love Art tutorial series. I'm Vivian, and as summer winds down, I got inspired by all the unique postcards I saw during my travels. But I thought, what if instead of paper postcards, we could make digital ones? Postcards that are animated and one of a kind. So today I'm going to show you how I helped a friend from New York to create a moving postcard with a cartoon-styled Statue of Liberty riding a motorcycle along realistic New York streets. We're starting right inside Love Art, and instead of typing in the chat on the right, I'm going to go to this add button and you can see the add to canvas tools here. One of them is image. You can either click A or just press the button directly. This gives you a new empty generation frame directly on the canvas. Before you start writing the prompt, you can see that there are a few options here. Make sure you choose your model, either Flux Context 1 or ChatGPT image. Both work really well here. And for format, we're gonna go with a landscape ratio because that's what postcards are usually like. So in this case, I'm going to press the default 4 by 3. Now here's one of my favorite features, the style library. It's on the bottom left of this box where you click select style and you can scroll through all these different styles until you find the one that you want to reference for what you want to generate. In this case, I really like this style called Toon Reality Mix. It's kind of that mixed media look where your character looks cartoonish, but then the background stays photorealistic. And you can click on this image icon right here and see the example images. Yeah, and I think this is the exact style that I actually want to reference with a motorcycle. So I'm just going to go back and click on this Tune Reality Mix style. There you go, it will reference that style as you can see here. And we can go forward with the prompt. You can also choose how many images you want to generate, and in this case, I'm going to go with four. And on the bottom right of the prompt panel, you can also see how many credits that it's going to take. In this case, it's only four. It kind of helps you to track your credit usage as well. So I'm going to click generate directly here, and you can see that there are four frames that are currently under generation. Once the four results came out, I'm going to pick the one that I like the most. And in this case, I'm going to go with this last one. I feel like this captures exactly what I imagined. She's riding the motorcycle, but still holding her torch high up in the air, which I really like. And here comes the fun part, the extract layer function. I'm going to click on this image and on the top of the canvas, you can see that there's a menu bar. If you click on this icon, which is called extract layer, it takes the image that you just generated, which is the fourth one that I picked, and separate a specific object, like this cartoon character in the front, from the background. So once I click on it, I'm going to be able to select an area. I will drag this rectangle over this character that I want to separate, this Statue of Liberty character, and the tool will automatically recognize that you want to separate her out from the background. I'm going to click on the Generate button. This will take 30 credits. Once the extract layer process is done, you now have two layers, the original background here and the cutout cartoon character in the foreground. And here's the cool part. You can now click on the Statue of Liberty character anywhere on the canvas without affecting the background. But now I want to help my friend's idea come to life, making it into a moving postcard. But how am I going to do that? So I'm taking this Statue of Liberty, now a movable layer, and I will drag her to the left side of the frame, and that will be our start frame. And now we're going to select this frame, click copy, and paste it. I'm moving this statue to the right side of the street, here. And this will be our end frame. Once both characters are in place for each frame, select all of these two layers and click merge layers to flatten them back into a single image for both the start and end frames. And now once we have these two images that are flat already, we can go back to this add to canvas tools and click on video. And again, it's going to have a video generation tool built right here on the canvas. So if you hover around here, you can see that there are two buttons, one for start frame and for end frame. And if you click on the start frame, you can either upload an image directly from your files or select a generated image from the canvas. So for the start frame, I'm going to pick this one. 
and as you can see it's been selected and for the end frame I'm gonna do the same but select the image where the Statue of Liberty is on the right and in the video prompt box we're gonna type this and that's it hit generate and after a short wait you'll get the final video output As you can see, it's a very smooth video animation of the cartoon Liberty riding across the real New York City streets. It connects the two frames exactly how we positioned them, so the result is very clean and directional, and it also matches the visual concept that I had in mind without using too many credits. But this is only a very simple demonstration of how to use all these functions in LoveArt together. From the Add to Canvas image generation tool with the style library built within, and then to the extract layer function, and then to the video generation function built inside the canvas with the start and end frame features. LoveArt's new canvas tools gives you full creative control and does not require any external software. So try making your own scenes, whether it's postcards from New York or your hometown, or maybe use the same reality cartoon mix style in the style library to put your favorite fictional character in a real world scene. I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. See you in the next one, LoveArters. Thank you for watching.